This next story is quite tragic. In fact, you may want to hold your loved ones a little bit closer. Theodosia Burr Alston was the daughter of Aaron Burr, once the Vice President of the United States. In July of 1812, after a four-year exile for his duel with Alexander Hamilton, Burr had returned from Europe to his home in New York. Burr longed to see his daughter, Theodosia. When Theodosia received a letter from her father to come visit, there was no joy, no excitement. She had just lost her 10-year-old son, named Aaron after her father, to malaria. With her husband, Joseph Alston, recently sworn in as governor of South Carolina, Theodosia sat on her silk upholstered couch, staring longingly out of the window of her home. Wearing a white linen dress and a gold locket around her neck, she tightly gripped her son's lead toy soldiers. Theodosia mourned alone. It wasn't until December that Theodosia could build up the strength and commitment to travel by sea, up the Atlantic from South Carolina, to see her father Aaron. As Theodosia's husband was also the head of the state militia, he would be unable to accompany her. A family friend would go in his place. Theodosia stood briefly at the bow of the schooner Patriot before leaving port. She watched as the water gently slapped the hull of the schooner and swayed side to side with the current. Theodosia mourned alone. As the schooner Patriot sailed the winter Atlantic waters, another ship emerged out of the morning fog with sinister intentions. The Patriot and its passengers came under attack by pirates. The schooner Patriot never made it to its destination. Theodosia sat chained in the hull of a strange ship, on board with strange men. And as the ship embarked for another course, perhaps south, Theodosia lamented and grieved for all that she had and all that she lost. Sitting in her white linen dress, she held on to one of her son's lead toy soldiers. While the pirates had pillaged most of her belongings, Theodosia would not let them have this. In the spring of 1813, after a series of storms battered the coast of Tejas, a warrior of the Karankawa explored the fresh ruins of a ship that had washed ashore at the mouth of a river that the Spaniards, he remembered, called San Bernard. The warrior was extremely tall. He wore a buckskin breech clout, and on his head he wore a collection of feathers. The warrior's body was covered in tattoos, oil, and piercings of cane that he wore proudly. As he pulled away a large, tattered piece of canvas, the Karankwa warrior saw a small woman in a torn, white dress who stood almost lifeless, chained to a section of the wrecked ship. They studied each other until the small woman collapsed, the Karankwa warrior catching her in his arms. In the palm of her hand was a lead toy soldier, and around her neck was a gold locket engraved with the name Theodosia. Splayed open, the locket revealed a portrait of what appeared to be a mother and a child. Theodosia looked up at the tall warrior with a faint smile. He stared blankly back at her as the small woman drew her last breath, and the color in her cheeks faded as the breeze caught the salt water. The warrior mourned for the stranger alone. Stories have been told of sightings at the mouth of the San Bernard, of a small woman in a tattered white dress. Local fishermen have tried to approach her to provide assistance for her to turn, looking in the direction of home, 
and fade away in the June breeze.